Maranatha, everyone. This is Pastor Jed, and this is another edition of my most of the time weekly video blog, Apologetics and Prophecy, where we like to take current events, put them through an apologetical and biblical lens to see just how close we are to the return of our Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, he tells us, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. And then he lays out what the characteristics of culture and society and people would be like in the last days. And we've always talked about these things as being in the future. But where we're at right now, in the times that we're living in, they are here. That time has already come. Let's just look at a few of of the things that the characteristics that are here that uh, that Paul lays out to Timothy that would say would be characteristics of this perilous times in the last days. Well, men would be lover of themselves and lovers of money. We just saw in uh, Scotland this last week, it was the COP26 um, Global Climate Conference on um, and it took a different turn than normal uh, conferences that the UN and other countries would put on as international things where the leaders would gather together and make decisions on how we can uh, stop climate change. And of course, this what was different about this one, this included the corporate world. One of the things that we don't quite grasp, we won't find on the news, is that the one thing that happened during the coronavirus pandemic was there was the, mo the, the, the largest redistribution of wealth in human history happened in 2020. When um, the Federal Reserve basically um, opened up uh, the, the ability for banks and finance companies to purchase large quantities of debt or um, stock that was losing money. And of course, that's when you talk about, remember we the, the big thing on the news was the V-shaped recovery because it dropped in March and then came back rather quickly. Well, what really had happened was it wasn't that the, the companies bounced back. What happened was the shareholders sold their stock and caused the price to drop and it was purchased back by two of the biggest finance companies in the world, BlackRock and Vanguard. But what a lot of people don't realize is that these corporations are working hand in hand with the government. So basically what happened with the COVID-19 all across the globe is that the governments got control of money. The governments now control the stock market. The Federal Reserve is not a government entity, it is a private entity that is a puppet entity of the government. So now when they go and say that they're going to start these different things with corporations on how to uh, use climate change as a, as, as, a, as a gateway or an avenue to put global power on the earth, all of them came forward and voted for a 15% excise tax on all global citizens. So when we talk about a global government and a global banking system, we're not talking about something in the future. It's something that is already here. Well, we still have boundaries. We might still have borders, but the reality is that all of these things are being controlled by this global unit already. They're, they're lovers of themselves and lovers of money. Of course, they're boasters and they're proud, it says. Well, look at our current uh, president that we have right now boasting about the vaccine mandates for all and how if you're not if you're the un, the, the the pandemic is the pandemic of the unvaccinated and he's boasting about how great things are when really they're not the economy is not doing that great people there's a lot of problems right now and he's talking about how we're building back better but that's not true it isn't happening they're boastful and they're proud. What about unholy, slanderers, despisers of what is good? They are already saying that it's the Christians, it's us, those of us that are standing for the truth and, and, and pointing out the lies. We're the ones that are getting in the way. We're the ones that are the problem for progress. 
And then, of course, there's a form of godliness, but they're denying the power of. It's the Laodicean church. Look around us. Church, many people came back to their churches after COVID when they re finally reopened again and found a whole different church. Their pastors have gone woke and now they're part of the world system. They're buying into the lies of the enemy and opening up their doors. They took government loans and now the government is telling them what they can and cannot do. They have a statement of faith, but they, but they deny it in their practice. It's so funny today. You can look at a church and you can read their statement of faith, but when you listen to what they teach, they don't even teach what they have written down as their statement of faith. But of course, we know that later on in that chapter, in chapter 3 and verses 12 and 13, it says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That time is here. We are living in the midst of it, folks. As Christians living in this last days, it's no longer a foreseeable thing in the future. Um, let's back up a little bit about lo the lovers of themselves and the lovers of money and uh, this corporation uh, takeover. The thing that they talk about now that they're using, and they, they really brought it up a lot in COP26, you've probably heard the term ESG or your ESG score. And I think it's important that we define that for you as they define it themselves to show us that we are here. We are in the last days. The setup for the tribulation period is already there. ESG is an environmental, social, and corporate governance. It, the social, environmental, social, and corporate governance, that's what ESG is, is an evaluation of a firm, a corporation's, collective consciousness for social and environmental factors. It is typically a score that is compiled from data collected surrounding specific metrics related to intangible assets within the enterprise. It could be considered a form of corporate social score. Now, we've talked about the social credit score that China is imposing on their citizens and which is soon to be here in the United States. It is happening in other countries that are imposing these vaccine mandates to the point where that if you your, your score is low, you get a red pass. You can't go in and out of businesses. It's already happening. Um, it says research shows that such intangible assets compromise an increasing percentage of future enterprise value. While there are many ways to think of intangible metrics, those three central factors together, ESG compromise a label that has been adopted throughout the United States financial industry. They are used for a myriad of specific purposes with the ultimate objective of measuring elements related to sustainability and social, socio, societal impact of, com of a company or business. Mainly what they're saying. That, that the government, now that controls the, 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 the invested interest through Black, BlackRock and Vanguard and all of these corporations in the world, they're the major shareholders now because of the V-shaped recovery, the buyback, the transfer of wealth that went into the hands of these corporations that are basically uh, the, the footprint for the ESG score, that they are gonna force these corporations to fall in line with mandates, with, with LGBTQ rights, and with anybody that any company that doesn't, or vendors or people that don't fall in line with, with what they say, with their imperialistic and, and, and tyrannical views, will be not able to do business. They won't be able to, they, they won't use those vendors. They'll be astrogated. They will not be able to be used. Does that sound like something that we're familiar with? This is what's happening in the world today. It's not coming, it is here. Let us remember in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 and 16, 15 through 17 says, the second beast, which was, is the false prophet, was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It, could, it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free or slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark. Which is the name of the beast or the number of its name? This type of system isn't coming. It is already here. The only thing missing is the Antichrist. 
The only thing that's here that's stopping it is the church. We are living right on the precipice of history prophetically. We are at the door po- the doorway for the rapture is so imminent that you can't miss it. If you don't want to believe that what I just read isn't happening, then you need to look up, go and Google the COVID restrictions in Lithu- Lithuania. You cannot go anywhere without having electronic pass that has green on it. If you try to go and buy and sell without a COVID vaccine, they won't let you. They literally, if you are unvaccinated in Lithuania, you cannot buy or sell or, or do anything. You can't go into stores. You can't go anywhere. You're not even allowed to be in a household of more than 12 people. It's crazy, but it's happened. The system is here. We are living literally at a time period where within a blink of an eye, we're going to be gone. The rapture is so intimate, I don't even know what to say anymore. So all I can say is that as the news continues to unfold, we are no longer looking forward to these things that we read about in Revelation, but they are already here. The only thing missing is a leader. Notice how none of the countries have anybody to lead. And they're all looking for somebody that can take all of this system, the AI, the, the, the passports, all of this stuff, and put it into practice and make it a global thing. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. But first, the church, the believers, the restraining force left here on the earth must be evacuated. So with that said, I don't know your heart. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you're saved or not. Only you can answer that question. But I know this much, you do not want to be left behind. You do not want to be left behind for one of the worst times in human history. Jesus said that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. It would be the greatest tribulation that ever happened since humans walked this earth, since creation until that time, nor would ever be after that. It's a horrible time that you and your family and loved ones do not want to be part of. Where that if you don't take the mark, if you do not go align, if you do not have a good social credit score, you'll be put to death. The image will be able to put you to death. That technology is already here. It is already here. It doesn't need to be implemented. It doesn't need to be designed any further. It's already here. So the only thing that I can really beg of you, that I can suggest of you, is to make sure that you're right with God to make sure that you have repented of your sins. That means to change your mind. You can't change your life. You have to change your mind and realize that that your sins are abominable before God and that you deserve judgment. But then you need to receive Christ. You need to remember that Christ, you need to realize that Christ died on the cross for your sins and that he provided a pardon for your sins. He provided forgiveness for all your sins, past, present, and future. And that when you put your faith and trust in him, that you will have your sins wiped away past, present, and future, and that you will be able to not have to face the wrath of God that's coming upon a world that has rejected his son, Jesus Christ. So please do that today. Please consider that today. And for the rest of us, we're not waiting any longer for anything to be fulfilled. It's already here. And all I can say is be ready and look up because you know your redemption draws near. So God bless you all. I will see you soon, hopefully, if not here, there, or in the air. And as I end every program, as I begin, Maranatha.